All right. Welcome back to Channel 9 Live. Um, my name is Wade Wegner, and I'm a host on the Cloud Cover Show. Today I'm joined by... Steve Marks. I uh, am the co-host of Channel 9's Cloud Cover Show, the best show on Channel 9. And I'm uh, Nick Harris. I'm a technical evangelist for Windows Azure, and I work on Wade's team. And I'm Nathan Totten. That's it. Excellent. That's all. So, so today we're going to talk about Windows Azure. There were a lot of exciting announcements at the keynote this morning. And uh, as always, what you can do if you want to ask some questions is uh, send a tweet and make sure to include the hash channel 9 live. And then uh, we'll be able to read those questions and uh, we'll get Steve to answer them for us. So um, excellent. So tell me about the keynote. So what did we see this morning that related to Windows Azure? We saw Tankster, right? Tankster. We did see Tankster. What is Tankster? I hear Tankster is the new Norquin. That's what the tweet said. Yes. I saw it. So tell us a little bit about Tankster, Nate. Yeah, so Tankster is part of the uh, Windows Azure Toolkit for Social Gaming. Um, we've released several versions of this. You can find, you can find it on uh, CodePlex. Um, it's also available on, uh, the game's actually available on tankster.net. Um, but basically what it is, a set of uh, best practices, guidance for Windows Azure, all kind of packaged up into a fun game called Tankster. It's a tanks shooting game, yeah, multiplayer. And you, and, and you guys made some updates, I think, for the keynote specifically today, right? So yeah, Jason, we did. Jason Zander showed a lot of uh, enhancements and new technologies used to make this game even more immersive and, and incredible. Yep. So yeah, we yeah we built a, a Windows Phone version and uh, connected them together with sockets to make the gameplay a little more real time. Yeah. Uh, a few a few other little enhancements and yeah, yeah we'll be you know keeping up, keep keeping that source up to date and releasing uh, future versions later. Yeah. So um, right now, Steve and I have our laptops here and we're actually on www.tankster.net. So any of you that want to try it, go to Tankster, log in, and uh, we're going to join the battle here, Q, in a couple of minutes and uh, hopefully. Hopefully we'll get to play some Tankster with you guys. Hopefully it's not just going to be me, me and Wade playing against each Although, other because I do not stand a chance. Okay, yeah. so I need some people in there. To I've got kinda... a little bit of practice with it. <laughs> yeah. So while while we're waiting for this, so talk a little bit about like the game interaction. So we're going to be playing the live website. Mm -hmm. How is it that his machine and my machine are actually communicating using Windows Azure? It's yep. Bluetooth, right? Uh, Bluetooth. Yeah. <laughs> just a, there's a there's a wire that runs between your two computers. <laughs> Um, so we use a couple different technologies. Uh, we're basically, uh, sort of our, our architectural pattern is this command queue architecture uh, where we send services to, uh, to a web role that's running the WCF web APIs. Uh, and that's where most, a lot of the commands get sent, like the join game, start game, invite players. Um, and then also we have, uh, so then after those commands, we sort of mash up some data, like who's playing the game, the state of the game, and we store, we store a lot of that in blob storage. And uh, the clients pull some of that data directly from, from the blob. Uh, the other way we do it is we're actually using sockets to communicate between the games. And this, this enables us, so like the phone version, we're using uh, regular sockets. The mobile, ver or the web version, we're using web sockets, which enables us to do really fast, real-time uh, sort of communication between the game. The game that, that we actually released a few months ago, we were doing polling with the blob. Um, which, which worked really well, and it actually has some advantages in that it's really scalable, but the disadvantage with that is it took a little bit of time, like several seconds for the game turns to actually play. So this newer version with sockets is basically instantaneous communication. Yep. Um, the toolkit actually has both versions in it because there's, you know, so there's, there's, there's reasons to do sockets and there's reasons to do blob storage depending on what your game is and the scenario you're going for. Yeah, and we're actually playing here right now. It looks like at least one of you have uh, joined us. Yeah. Um, I, Pretty sure that that Steve just hit nailed someone with a nuke. I did, I did. I'm very proud of that. In fact. Um, so, we'll, but uh, but back to the technology. This whole, thing. Um, you actually have a talk coming up at the conference here at yep. Build, which is of course going to be here live, but also uh, online within a day or two after the talk. Um, that's uh, basically about this and the architecture mm -hmm. and the toolkit, right? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, my talk's uh, tomorrow at 2.30 here. Uh, and yeah, we'll be talking about Tankster, the architecture, how we built it, um, some of the different uh, patterns as far as scale and storage, uh, things like that. Um, so we'll be, and we'll also be, I'll be demoing um, the web version, which is HTML5, also the Windows 8 version, uh, and then the Windows Phone version as well. That's awesome. That's great. Well, as we continue to play this, oh, yes. Uh -huh. um, that, Why don't we? There was another was thing announced this morning. Like destroyed. So, uh, um, in addition to Tankster, um, one of the other big things we covered was John Shuchuk uh, talked about the Access Control Service, 
and really connecting a bunch of the services up in Windows Azure by using identity. And so his entire uh, demo was kind of based around this. But before we get to the specifics there, I want to mention that it was actually built on top of a toolkit we also released today called the Windows Azure Toolkit for Windows 8. And uh, the author and creator of that toolkit is, uh, is Nick Harris right here. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that toolkit. Yeah, so the, uh, the Windows Azure Toolkit for Windows 8, I guess, was created to help accelerate you guys in building scenarios whereby you can take your Windows Metro, Metro style apps and um, leverage the power of Windows Azure. So one of the, the core, I guess, use cases that we've got implemented in the, in, within the toolkit is, um, I guess, uh, Windows push notification service. So for those of you guys who are familiar with the Microsoft push notification service and delivering notifications uh, to Windows Phone 7, the scenario there is quite similar. It's, it's four simple steps. Request a channel, register your channel with your cloud-based service, authenticate against WNS, and then push your notification. So the toolkit contains several assets which will be quite useful to you, and I guess they're reusable. So We've got, say, for instance, uh, project templates within VS 2010. So you've got the nice, easy, file new project experience, and it'll go and uh, create a solution there for you that has your cloud-based project, your ASP.NET MVC website to go and drive your notifications with. It's got a WCF REST service there for registering your channels, and it also goes off and generates the uh, Windows Metro-style client, which goes and requests your channels and wires all that up. So it's a really great scenario there. Yeah. It sounds, it's, it's very similar to the devices toolkits that we've been building, and with the, with, entirely with the use case being, let's make it a little bit easier for application developers to start leveraging services in Windows Azure. Yeah. And so a great toolkit, and I can actually attest to the fact that it helps quite a bit when building out demos, because you know, I actually used it to build out uh, the demo that John Shuchuk showed today. Yeah. And so that was the Ad Access Control Service demo, uh, whereby it's a Metro-styled app. It's uh, HTML and JavaScript. Um, one of the very first things you do in it is um, through ACS, you actually can authenticate to an existing identity provider. So John showed Facebook, but it could just as easily work with Live ID, with uh, um, you know, Google ID, Yahoo, and Yahoo, so forth. Yep. Once you get that token, that token really then is the um, mechanism whereby you can get access to a whole bunch of other services. So as we call out to a service to return travel information, we embed that token in the request header so that our services running in Windows Azure can actually authenticate that user and validate that they're really a, you know, a valid user and you know, who they are. Um, additionally, we use that token to get access to the data market and other rich data that can come from Bing and so forth. And so that's what we demonstrated in that application as well. So. And you guys both have talks on that, right? So you're yeah. doing a talk that's uh, focused around notifications. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah. using but using the toolkit to do that. Yeah, yeah. So that that talks on Thursday. It's uh, eight six three at two thirty. Um, so that's delivering notifications. I even okay. know your using number. Windows that's, Azure. I was really impressed. Windows that's that was that face of it. Yeah. Well, he did say that he was going to spend the next three hours rehearsing. For that it was as good. Well, yeah. So. yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, and you have a talk that's about this. I mean, we've got now a bunch of these toolkits. Right. You know, you mentioned for iOS, for yep. Android, for Windows Phone seven. Um, and now we've got the Windows, you know, 8, Windows well. 8 is it's sort of one in that family. And you have a talk that's about that full range of devices. Yeah, mine's, mine's basically that. how to build device applications with Windows Azure. Yeah. And so I'm going to, I mean, it's an hour talk, so I can only show so much on each one of these platforms. But we're just going to walk through what are the considerations that you need to have when building an application that runs on a device, in particular yeah. a mobile yeah. device, and um, you know, how do you leverage Windows Azure across them. So we'll, we'll go through that. So yeah. Um, real quick, let's uh, make sure that if any of you have questions, to uh, send us a tweet at, uh, well, actually, no, using the hashtag uh, CH9Live. And uh, again, we're going to get Steve to answer them for us. So. And I was the first one out of the tankster game. I just want to. Yeah, I think I actually won. So. Let everyone know that that does not surprise me. Um, <laughs> neither of those things surprises me very that's, much. That's because Wade just spends hours practicing at the office. That's pretty I much do. all he do. does, actually. Yeah, actually, when we first released this, my wife and I did play a few games back and forth from different rooms on it. So it's an enjoy. It's a fun, enjoyable game. So even even my wife liked it. So at any rate, now there was a lot of other news about Windows Azure today as yep. well. Um, so Steve, why don't you share some of the additional news? 
Yeah, so what happened? So we shipped an SDK. Yeah. So Windows Azure SDK 1.5 uh, went out today. Yep. And, um, and the Windows Azure App Fabric SDK 1.5. Windows Azure App Fabric SDK 1.5. Uh, there's also some new storage APIs yep. that also just came out. Of course, the toolkit yep. was also toolkit. the first release of the, the Windows Azure toolkit for Windows 8 went out. Um, Very cool announcement around uh, storage. Storage, geo-replication. Yep, geo-replication. There are two exciting announcements. Yep. Okay, there's geo-replication, which is really important. So geo-replication yes. basically means all of your data stored in blobs and tables in Windows Azure will be replicated to another uh, data center within the same region. Yep. So you'll have a full copy that's, that's uh, far away, but still within the same region uh, from your original data. And the whole reason for that is that way, if there is some disaster, if, uh, if Godzilla steps on a data center, um, or there's a fire, or an <laughs> That's a real risk, Godzilla. Or, or one of those other equally likely scenarios, <laughs> yeah. Then, um, then we have another copy, you know, we have uh, in the other data center, and so yep. we can do failover to that. Yep. Whatever. More details will come on exactly how all that works, but uh, that just got announced today. Yeah, the and other... actually, Brad Calder has a talk on that. Um, is yep. it today, today, I think? So, today at, uh, so you can check PM. out his talk so, at 5 p.m. Uh, what's, the, what's the session number? Uh, it's <laughs> 17493. <laughs> and, uh, that's, that's his PIN code for his credit yeah, card. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't think of a random number, so I just gave my PIN. Um, <laughs> but, but you know what else there is in storage? There's upsert. Yes. Which I, uh, there's actually there are probably more interesting new storage features, and all the details will come. Brad will talk about them in his talk, but there'll also be blog posts. And yep. Yep. But upsert, I think, is one that uh, is I'm that, pretty excited and about. And it applies to both tables and queues, right? It applies to ta well, upsert specifically is is tables. There is. There's the ability can, now to do like modifications of queue messages. Okay, it's so slightly it, different. It could be just uh, like a is, what is it? A, just an it's yeah. It's a update. Slight, the API is kind of a little bit different, but the but the okay. upsert one people have been asking for. I myself have written the insert, catch the exception, no way, detach the object, reattach it, update it, sort of thing. In fact, a demo that I'm doing here at Build has that code, and I'm hoping to replace it um, nice. now that we've. Excellent. Now that we've announced upsert, um, that, that's I mean that's actually quite significant from a, a scale and cost standpoint too. I mean if you're doing a lot of inserts, yep. that, I mean that cuts your transactions yeah, exactly. potentially in half. Transactions <laughs> and round trips, so yeah. I mean, the, the latency uh, uh, makes a difference too for some kinds of apps. Some apps it's not a big deal, but for for a number of apps that's uh, really significant. So that's very cool. Um, there's some service bus stuff that's new. Um, yeah, so all the service bus messaging components that had been in the labs environment are now in production. Right. So a lot of people have been excited about this. So with messaging, you get you know, a queue and a topic that gives you a durable place to uh, put some information. And one of the things that's great about topics is you have this ability to subscribe the messages and get pub sub through these, these, these durable message queues within the service bus. Um, you saw a lot of that, I think, in the keynote. In fact, uh, um, Dan and uh, Jeff demonstrated this with the Viper demo, I believe. Um, and uh, it was in Scott's demo. And there's just a lot of, lot of great uses of these queues. Yep. So um, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Now, specifically in the Windows Azure 1.5 SDK, what, what should people expect? Uh, well, they should expect a few things. One, one thing that I think everyone will appreciate is there's actually been some rather significant changes to the way the compute emulator works um, to, make, uh, to give higher fidelity between the compute emulator and the actual cloud. Mm -hmm. So less surprises when you actually go deploy that something and something worked a different way. Yep. Um, it's does a little, a little better with too. It, it does. It starts up faster. Yeah. It does a little better with handling ports and, and reuse. It, it's just. It's actually quite nice. I've gotten to play with it Good. now for a couple weeks, I guess, uh, from sort of internal preview bits. Um, just got the final bits on my machine today. Um, I like it. Uh, I think that those those improvements are good. There's some other nice things in the. We should point out, like on a cloud on a cloud cover show, we showed the file new project deployed to Windows Azure and mm -hmm. kind of had to make some updates based on uh, the session provider. They've changed that now, so the default session provider is yep. in proc, so you won't run into that issue. Um, there's some package validation stuff that's nice. Like if yeah. you're missing an assembly, it will actually right at the time when you go try to package it up and deploy it, it'll go, hang on, you referenced this assembly, but you didn't mark it copy local. Yeah. People have used Windows Azure a lot. Uh, will probably appreciate that. Um, so basically, better validation, uh, a better compute emulator, nicer tooling around things. Uh, that, actually, in the keynote, there was a demonstration of... Profiling. Uh, oh, profiling yeah, is also... Profiling. Yeah. yeah, very important. It's being able to actually deploy to the cloud yeah. and then still bring profiling data back and measure kind of where your performance bottlenecks are. Um, yeah. That's really key. Um, you can now 
take any web role project and just sort of turn it into a, that is very, a Windows Azure that is app very cool. with just sort of right click yep. uh, Convert add, to, to what, web what is the, yeah. But it basically just easy. immediately, it adds the new Windows Azure project, hooks yeah. everything up. Um, a lot of nice little stuff. Like it's, I mean, these aren't like brand new scenarios that were never possible before. These are just like really nice, yeah. like day to day, you'll appreciate kind of some of these changes that yeah. went in. Yeah, that's um, yeah, awesome. So very good stuff. It's been uh, pretty exciting to see that stuff come out. Uh, I'm also doing a talk. You are? I'm doing a talk. I know. Is that why you're here? It's surprising. That's why I'm here. Um, and I'm doing a talk on just generally combining Windows 8 Metro style apps with, uh, yeah. with Windows Azure. So well, I'm kind of imagine... touching on a lot of what everybody else is talking about, yeah. but not in quite as much detail. So <laughs> I imagine there's quite a few people curious about doing Metro styled apps with yeah. Windows Azure. and. You know, given your talk, you know what what's what is it? What have you found? Like, what's different? What's significant? What do you like? I found, you know, what what I've been doing mostly is I've been coming at it from the angle of a web developer, which is not necessarily where everyone's going to come from, but I think a lot of people will. Where I I'm used to writing JavaScript and CSS and doing yep. AJAX style requests, and I wanted to basically do the same thing, but with these. I mean, I heard that Windows 8 has this cool JavaScript and HTML model for doing app development. It's only one of the models that's available, but uh, it does fit really, my experience so far has been, it fits exactly with what I'm used to as a, yeah. as a web developer. And so I've basically just taken, uh, you know, the sort of app development I was already doing on Windows Azure, but built the client instead as a, as a Metro style app on Windows. Um, it's basically, it's like being in the browser, except you've got all these great uh, you can call out to all these functions in the the Windows runtime, yeah. and so you can you can you can do things. You can make cross domain requests without worrying about yeah. it. You can so it's sort of it's like having just a really relaxed model, yeah. but with the same kind of development style. Um, but then, as I'm sure people have been seeing in the keynotes and other things, there's all this richness of being an app on Windows gives you so much more uh, than just being in the browser. Yeah. Like you can good, do all those sharing things and all that kind of web of apps well, that people are talking a about. Good example, like uh, in the keynote, one of the things we demonstrated was using the web broker for authentication. Right. And so the web broker is a function of Windows 8 and it is a secure way to interact and kind of log in to different identity providers. And from that web pro broker, we have the ability to get the token from ACS back and then store it in a secure password vault. Yep. And that's again, something that not being on a rich platform like Windows 8, you don't have the right. ability to just that, tap into that. And that vault roams. And that vault roams. So, so yeah, if I so log, log in with my live ID to a different yes. Windows 8 machine, and if you're, I still and have those credentials. If your machine is trusted. So make sure that you, that machine is trusted. Um, and what I mean by that is when you first set up Windows 8, and if you choose a live ID, mm -hmm. it'll automatically set that machine as trusted. But let's say you don't log in with that live ID initially and so I forth. See. You'll actually have to go to live.com and go to your account settings and set it to be trusted. Once you've got multiple machines though that are trusted, those things roam, and it is pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. So that's nice. Yeah. So, well, Nick, you've been doing a lot of work with yeah. the uh, the Metro styled apps as well. Yeah. So I've been doing a, a bit of digging there, particularly around the toolkit scenario. So yeah. It's I've I've found the API quite nice to work with. So um, not not just the HTML5 and JS, but also the the XNA yeah. and C sharp side of the fence. So it's really great there for developers. The, who have the, the XAML. In both. Yeah, XAML, yeah. sorry. Yeah. 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 Now, specifically, you've spent a lot of time with the Windows Notification Service, right? Yes. And uh, pushing notifications to the device from yeah. Windows Azure. Um, and you know, you've spent a lot of time with the Windows Notification te uh, Windows Push Notification Services yeah. team, and uh, they seem pretty excited about Windows Azure for hosting these things. Like, what are some of the advantages to having Windows Azure to push those yeah. notifications? Yeah. So I, I guess one of the great things that we've got there in Windows Azure is the capability to scale. Mm -hmm. So as you've seen in the keynote. Uh, once your apps are up there, there's the potential that they're going to be utilized by millions of users around the world. So you really need to be developing your backend services for those apps in, I, I guess, something that's going to scale out when you need to on demand. And Windows Azure is perfect for that. Yeah. So we actually have a, our first question from, uh, from Dan. And I think this is a great one to direct to you, Nick. So he's asking about, um, are you going to release new XNA libraries as well? I'm guessing that he means libraries for SAML C Sharp interaction with the toolkit. Um, and are you suggesting the, what to use for, for 3D? Um, any thoughts on that, like for the toolkit? I mean, we're not planning to do any 3D-based type support for, for the uh, toolkits, are we? Uh, not not for as the Windows yet. 8? Yeah, at this point? 
So we're strictly kind of focusing on how to tap into services running in Windows Azure, not right. necessarily right. rendering 3D the, graphics and... No, there's so. no reason you can't do that anyway, right? right. I mean, the, the fact that, I mean, the toolkit is basically focused around that connectivity yeah. and stuff, right? But, um, yeah. but there's no reason if you're, if you're building a 3D game and you're writing even native code and whatever, you can still reuse the same, uh, yeah. the same sort of stuff, um, the, certainly the same server-side components and, um, and do that. People are all over Tankster, by the oh, way. Yeah? You should You're jump back playing? in. I just uh, I started another game. I don't. I don't want to make it unfair. I'll I'll let you. Yeah. I'll let let, you play. let someone else have a turn at winning. Yeah. So um, <laughs> probably last opportunity. I'll just say real quick before we end up leaving. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and uh, if anyone has any other questions, uh, go ahead and send them to at or uh, uh, hash ch9 live, and uh, maybe we can get one or two more more questions in here. But uh, we could just make some up. Just pretend people asked. You know, where, yeah. where, where can you download the Windows Azure Toolkit for Windows 8? That's an excellent question. Yeah, why don't you tell us? <laughs> why yeah, doesn't Nick so, take that one? <laughs> so you can get it at wat, w -A -T, windows 8codeplexcom So fresh up there as of this morning, and it's uh, ready to go. Excellent. All right. Any other closing thoughts before we leave? Go down, download the 1.5 SDK. Yeah, I mean, give one thing. A try. Right, one thing people should. Uh, just the timeline of everything, right? Because a lot of things got announced this morning. Some of you can get now. You can get the, the Windows Azure SDK 1.5, the App Fabric SDK 1.5. Um, those you can just go get. They're on uh, web platform installers, the easiest way, I think, to get them. So just go fire up WebPI, and the new ones will be there. Yep. Um, we, do, we should oh. point out that, yeah. that using the Windows, so those of you who have gotten Windows 8, um, the, the developer preview for Windows 8, either uh, because you were here at the conference and you got a yeah, you shiny got device, new, or you downloaded in which it. case I hate you because we don't get those. Um, <laughs> or if you've downloaded it and kind of installed it somewhere or started a VHD or whatever. If you try to install the Windows Azure SDK on there, and the there are a couple things yep. to know about. Um, the, the biggest thing is that you will need to run them on Visual Studio 2010. Correct. The Express Edition is fine, but Correct. they won't work in, the, in Dev 11. And they're actually there's a, a couple, couple minor gotchas. Yeah. Are you going to blog? Yeah, I'll blog about them. Basi basically, right. there's an environmental variable you want to update, and then some IS settings. But yeah. we'll get that in a blog post. It's actually it's pretty easy, but, but know to look for it. If yeah. you run into snags or whatever, just go look wadewegner.com. Yeah. Your, we'll, uh, we'll have blog. something up there. We'll make sure that that's up there. Um, All right. Well, thank you guys yeah. very much for joining us, that's and it. thank you guys for tuning in.